Hello and welcome to an overview for certification and compliance in companion specifications. I'm Alexander Almendinger, I'm the test lab manager of the OPC Foundation European Certification Test Lab and we are doing certification for OPC products from all over the world including companion specification testing. In this presentation I'm going to educate you on what a companion specification needs in order to allow certification of such. In the second half, we're going to talk about the compliance test tool, so-called CTT, because that is the most important tool for testing and certification testing as well. And then we're going to talk about the testing resources that are provided by the OPC Foundation. So let's start with the companion specification template, because that's the first thing you're going to see. In that companion specification template, you'll find a section that is called conformance units and profiles. In that section, you need to break down your companion specification into smaller items, into smaller units. Those are called profiles. So what is a profile? A profile is a group of a testable unit that describes a piece of functionality. So it includes multiple testable units and these are called conformance units. Profiles are given names and they are well defined and they are published on the OPC Foundation website as well as being listed in a certificate after certification testing. The OPC Foundation already did define several profiles that are available on that profile reporting tool. There are profiles available for servers, clients, publishers and subscribers. And we do highly encourage you to make use of those profiles in your own. Profiles can also be called facets. But there's a difference between a full featured profile and a facet. And the difference? The difference is a full feature profile is a standalone profile. That means it includes everything you need for having a server that can talk to a client or to have a publisher that can send data to a subscriber. A facet though is just a functionality. And that means that just by implementing a facet, you can't communicate with the implementation. You still need to have other facets to get a full working server. Then we need to take a look at the conformance unit that we already spoke about. A conformance unit is the smallest testable unit. And that can be, for example, individual services, but also trend specific transports, specific security options, or your data model. Even parts of the data model can end up being a conformance unit. A conformance unit may exist in more than just one profile and conformance units can be optional or mandatory and the same conformance unit can be optional in one profile and being mandatory in another one. A conformance unit are described as part of the profile and they have test cases related to them. Conformance units are grouped in conformance groups for easier review. So what did we already learn about profiles and conformance units? A conformance unit, as we said, is the smallest testable item, so it represents a specific feature. It defines a list of test cases that are uh, depending or that are mapped to that feature. A profile has a name that is grouping for, a feature, for several features, and a full feature profile is a combination of profiles and conformance units to have a standalone server, while a facet can't stand by itself. In certification testing, the vendor defines which profiles it supports in the product, and the certification testing is exactly verifying that those profiles are really um, implemented the correct way by executing the test cases for it. All the profiles that the implementation successfully passes are written on the specification at the, uh, on the certificate at the end. So the end user can trust in the tested profiles. So let's take a look at a sample. And as a sample, we're going to use the MDIS companion specification. The MDIS organization is from the oil and gas industry, and they already released their companion specification. That's why we're going to use that one. They defined multiple profiles and facets and conformance units. And we're going to take a look at the first one because that is the base profile or facet and it includes OPC UA profiles as well. So in their so-called MDIS base functionality server facet, they defined 
all the conformance units and features they need for implementing their companion specification in a server implementation. And that is what you see here. And we do highly encourage you to do it the same way. Then we already spoke about test cases. Test cases are within a conformance unit. And for the test case definitions, you get a separate document, which is an Excel sheet. And that is not inside of the companion specification. A test case definition consists of the description, the test execution, and the expected behavior. An example for that would be verifying operation limits, where the test uh, execution is, you need to read the operation limits and create a service call which makes use of those limits and verify with the expected behavior that everything succeeds. The compliance working group is maintaining that template for defining the test cases. And when you send a mail to compliance at opcfoundation.org, we are happy to map it to your companion specification. So let's take a look at that Excel sheet real quick. The test case definition is in a separate working sheet. So here we do see in the first working sheet, we do have an overview over all the defined conformance units and all the test cases that are defined. So you see, we do have several columns which does uh, specify an owner, for example, but also the number of test cases that are defined in it and whether a test case is a CTT test case or a lab test case. Where a CTT test case means it's an automated test where a compliance test tool script exists for it and a lab test case means it is a manual test because it requires manual interaction with the product, for example, placing an item on a sensor. All the other things are for statistical overview, so you see the current process. So let's take a look at a conformance unit in this document. You'll find several columns that are defining or helping to define a test case. The first one is the CTT column, which defines whether the test case is automated or manual, as we already spoke about. The next one is the numbering, and the numbering is pretty straightforward. The steps are more interesting because we do recommend to create one step per OPC service call in order to have the operation results as well as the service results that are defined later on in later columns um, for those specific service calls. We do have the test case description as well as the test requirements. And in the test requirements, you can define preconditions that need to apply or they need to be checked or specify specific input or output parameters. Then we do have the expected behavior, so what is expected after the step has been executed, as well as for your own maintenance reasons, having a column for the specification link as well as some comments. In the specification link, you can name the section that the test case is related to. That allows you to do easy maintenance because you can search for the section name in case you update your companion specification and apply updates to the test cases if needed as well. For those test case definitions, there are some best practices that I'd like you to educate you on. Don't reuse items, rather use multiple steps. That means that you should make your test cases always being run standalone. Reason for that is that you might get side effects when you do automated testing and you define or create the preconditions in the first step and then do test cases in test two, three, and four with those items. In addition to that, you might wanna run the test cases against um, multiple instances, and therefore the side, side effects would even grow. But more important for all the vendors is that the debugging capabilities are way better the moment you have standalone test scripts because you can debug line by line. Another best practice is that you shouldn't depend on the result of a previous test and not doing validation of the previous test. Because sometimes for a test case, it doesn't need to know whether the actual number is 100 or 90 because you're going to, the test case is about setting it to zero. And therefore, the precondition just doesn't, is not interesting as long as it's not zero. So now let's talk about the compliance test tool, the CTT. And the scope of it is to validate base OPC UA functionality. 
that was what it was intended for, and that is working pretty well. This includes information model verification. That means checking the type definitions, but also the object types, the data types, and the access rights of instances of certain objects. But that is just like taking a look at a building from the outside and saying, yes, it has four walls and a roof, it is a building. It doesn't tell you anything about the behavior that is implemented inside. So the most important part is the operation verification, where you can do in-range value checks. So you can validate that, for example, an item which is describing a percentage doesn't exceed 100. And you can also trigger actions and check the operation results at the end. For example, move a robot arm to a certain position and validate that the position matches your expectation. That is the important thing for the companion specification testing. So those test scripts can easily be integrated in the compliance test tool. And let's take a look at how this is done. So for a conformance group, you can basically just add your own conformance unit. You can export existing ones and you can also import uh, new conformance units. The same way you can add some new scripts to it. The CTT can be extended and the extension of the CTT does include additional settings like configuring object instances, but also to configure minimum and maximum values that might be more restrictive than the companion specification itself. You can also add, like we already said, profiles and facets and conformance units and test scripts. These extensions are in the responsibility of the collaboration group and they do need some effort. And that is why we do understand that the collaboration group needs to be able to define whether the developed extensions are accessible to everybody who can use the CTT or just for members of an organization or only for members of a collaboration group. We often get asked when can we start with preparing the necessary parts for companion specification certification. And that is basically an ongoing process. So you can start that the moment when you have specific objects defined. So you can define the conformance units and profiles once you have the use cases for them. You can also define the test cases once the conformance units and profiles are clear. And you can develop the test scripts the moment the test cases are pretty stable. You just need to ensure that ahead of releasing this companion specification that you did define the companion uh, conformance units and the profiles. What testing resources are provided by the OPC Foundation? Like we already mentioned, the profile reporting tool is available for everybody and it does define profiles, facets, conformance units and test cases. It does that for all the profiles and facets that are specified by the OPC Foundation and it, it'll do that for everybody who do companion specifications as well. The compliance test tool can be enhanced to do the testing of your companion specification by including test scripts for them. And finally, you can make use of the OPC Foundation certification labs to get a one-stop certification because only the OPC Foundation certification labs are allowed to certify base OPC functionalities. And you do have experienced script developers in that lab as well as experience in certification testing. So what is the conclusion? So the OPC companion specification needs to define profiles, facets and conformance units. The collaboration group is responsible for defining the test cases and ensuring the development of the test scripts. The OPC compliance working group helps with the general questions, but also provides contacts to developers and experts to help you define or develop the test cases and test scripts, as well as providing the Excel sheet template for the definition of the test cases. Just send a mail to compliance at opcfoundation.org and we provide you the contacts. Bottom line is certification testing becomes easy once the test scripts are available and are published. The test lab then can certify based on those test scripts and list your companion specification in the certified profiles. Thanks for your attention.